Welcome to my presentation about the MBS Soldier plugins. My name is Christian Schmitz and I'm the CEO of MonkeyPred Software. I've been doing this over 20 years now and since 2001 we got a lot of plugins for you. Currently we have 48 plugins. We have 45 are in the complete pack and 3 are separate. We have over 500 plugin parts, so the plugins are composed of several little parts and depending on what you use, you only get those little parts added to your application and not everything. In the documentation we have currently 79,000 items, which are classes, methods, constants, properties and currently we have over 3,000 classes available. And the plugin comes with 2300 example projects. So if you have a few weeks, you can uh, look at them all. And usually you just look for the thing you need and then copy whatever sample code you can use in your projects. Over the years, we added quite a few new things, but also removed older things since they got deprecated and then removed from the operation system. The plugin currently works with Sojo version since 2006, release 4, and recently we did quite a few changes for API 2 with changes to the folder item classes, the SQL classes, and of course all the new desktop controls. We added support for WebKit 2 on the HTML viewer for macOS. We get a newer plugin SDKs with every version, so we have to adjust as needed, and we added support for Apple Silicon. And of course, every few versions we have to update our Chromium classes to use the newer libraries as they are used in Sojo itself. Today I don't want to summarize what all the plugins do, because that would take hours. We just want to show you what's new since the last conference from last year. Please also watch the video from last year where we have a few more things we don't show today. So the first thing we added this year was to update our fidget classes for the newer fidget API 2.2. We supported fidget classes for over 10 years now. And with those classes you can work on all those little devices offered by the Fidget company, including a lot of sensors for humidity, for light, magnetic direction, the gyroscope, the pH sensor, you can uh, listen for noise, you can measure the, measure the temperature, get a captive touch pressure and of course measure pressure in general. You can also control analog and digital output and input, so you can measure what a signal is coming in and you can generate signals going out. All this works on macOS, Windows and Linux. Uh, with the fidget glasses you can build your own custom IoT devices, like you can build your own weather station where you would measure the sunlight or the air pressure and then decide if you turn on and off a motor for moving your sunshield in your office. Or you can build whatever things you like. And the rewrite of the classes was needed because the newer API changed a lot since uh, the old API, so we had to rewrite all the plugin classes for you. Next we added the scintilla control. This is an advanced text editor for desktop projects and you can use it in all your Sojo projects where you need a, a text editor with some advanced features. It brings syntax highlighting for over 100 languages like HTML or JavaScript or even Sojo script. It can do things like code folding so it can detect where an um, if or a loop is and then you can offer to collapse the lines. We have support for auto-completion 
to uh, offer you suggestions on what you may want to type and also we can offer call tips which is um, like showing you what parameters a function has. Then we can show error indicators like uh, red underline text and we can of course um, change the syntax for the styling as you need so you can define what color to use for what uh, element. We have a sample for doing find and replace where you can search with uh, normal text or regular expressions. And this all should work well on macOS, Windows and Linux. So in your cross-platform desktop application you can add that. Let me show you a few examples. So here we have some screenshots. The first one is a uh, Sojo script where we uh, show you a little bit auto-completion and the different um, colors for different things like pragmas, comments, uh, for keywords. Then we have an HTML example and we have one for MySQL syntax where you see we detect all the keywords and give them a color. And also we allow you to define these extra lines for bookmarks or breakpoints in the text. DynaPDF is in development for over 15 years and we have it in the plugins for over 10 years. In the last year we added more on check conformance function to make sure a PDF is in a certain standard and there we added PDF A to U and 3U standards to all the others we have already. Then we uh, made sure that everything works fine for Zugfert 2.2 and Factor X 1.6 uh, standards, so you can build those invoices uh, with embedded XML with Dyna PDF in your application and send them to the clients and everything is fine. For Windows we got new things for complex text layouts, so we can now do automatic font substitution like if you add a character which is not in the current font, you can provide an alternative font list where you would tell Dyna PDF what other font to use if the character is missing. This avoids uh, errors with missing glyphs in the current font. We also got object compression, which makes the PDF much smaller by compressing more parts of the PDF document. Then we got a version info class to tell you exactly about the current PDF you're producing as well as your import PDF, what exact PDF version, standard and feature flags it has. So you can see if an existing PDF is PDF A for example. Then we upgraded our convert style text function to allow you to specify the leading factor which defines the, li lane, no, defines the line spacing. So you can decide which line, line spacing to use when you convert text directly from a text area into your PDF document. Then in the last year we added more on iOS and we got controls for a web viewer, for maps and for 3D graphics with SceneKit. Our web viewer here offers a couple of more events than the built-in one and may be a good choice if you need more than the basics. Also you can show maps and Stephanie made a nice video to show you all about maps which you should be able to watch later. And SceneKit is of course great for showing 3D graphics like loading an object or a scene to animate. We also got new functions for style text, which you can use to get style text into your labels. And we got a sharing panel with a lot of more options, like allowing you to share several documents and for example pass five images to an email message or to an iMessage. For over 10 years we are now partnering with the LibXL guys and those are writing an excellent library to read and write Excel documents in the old and the new format styles. We added in the last year methods to do auto filter 
So you can set up an auto filter, you can define which columns to sort by, which values to filter by, and so you can fill all the data in the report and then uh, use the auto filter to only show the relevant data when the user opens the document. We also got extensive support for style text now. And with the XL form control classes, we can now control form elements on our Excel document. And this includes various styles of buttons, labels, controls like list box, radio buttons. And you can have a form loaded, fill in the values and save it back. So if you need to automate that, you can do that with our plugin. Then we got NSNet service classes, and you may ask what it is, but it's simply the Bonjour classes for macOS and iOS. We already have existing classes for Windows, Linux, and macOS, and now we also got a set of classes to work on macOS and iOS, and it's great to register a service in your iOS app. So your iOS app can either offer a service or find a service. And usually we use it or to connect a Mac and an iOS companion app on the local network. So one app could advertise that it's here and the other app could look for it and then you could connect with a normal socket. All the events are asynchronously, so you don't block your application while waiting for something or while uh, advertising. We support OCR with Tesseract uh, version 3 for a couple of years and now recently updated to Tesseract 4 so we can load the current um, Tesseract 4 libraries. This allows us to get uh, better quality on the text recognition and of course get more languages. And currently there are over 100 languages. There is already a version 5 in development and we may update our plugin for that later if there is demand for it. On the topic of barcodes, we have of course a lot of classes in the plugin to recognize barcodes and to create over 80 types of barcodes. And recently we added functions to load the setbar library, because the setbar library can detect a couple of um, barcode types. And it has the advantage that it can recognize several barcodes in a bigger image. So you can scan uh, a letter with a barcode on it and it should find the barcode on the, on the big page. And of course you can combine this with our classes for taking pictures with your camera or scanning documents from your flatbed scanner. A couple of people asked to get a container-based list or grid control and we provide you an example of a container-based list of containers which allows you to scroll through and uh, create containers on demand as needed. And so we have a version running on macOS and Windows, where we build uh, a list based on containers, as you see. And you can, of course, access all the containers, put in values, read values, add new dynamically. And it uses smooth scrolling on macOS by using an NS scroll view to host uh, the list. Then we got Text Finder. So you may have seen in, in text edit on macOS that you can search within your document and you can use the standard find control in a text area on macOS. You can do search and replace and the user will like it because it's what they're used to and it's localized automatically to your application language by Apple. It's just a little feature which our plugin can turn on and then you can enjoy it. Then uh, we worked on Chart Director in the last year and we got support for real-time charts where you can uh, have measurement values coming into your application. You can show a live chart updating several times a second with new data. You can scroll in, in the chart. You can um, zoom in to several areas and of course it auto-scrolls if it reaches the end. Here you see a few of the new chart types we got. So we got a discrete heat map layer chart and we got a tree map chart. So 
This is in addition to all the other 29 shard types we have. And then in the last year we updated to shard director 7, a new version which has new shard types as mentioned, but also gets extensive PDF support, so you can have shards outputted as a multi-page PDF document. You can use our Dyna PDF plugin to work on these PDF documents, like putting them together with other text and tables, and place your shards uh, in an existing PDF document. We got so better support for high DPI, so you get uh, two times the resolution if you like to show it on a screen, or four times for printing. The surface chart got uh, XY projection, and you see there is a texture in the sample picture on the right. And the output to PDF at SVG is much improved to use more vector graphics instead of just bitmaps. With NS Collection View, we have a new view for grid control on MacOS, which you can use to show a grid in your, in your MacOS app. It allows you to add new containers on demand to add more content. It can host millions of items, as it only provides containers for those which are visible currently, and it can reuse containers. It allows dynamic layout, so you can show as many columns as, as currently fit in the window, and you can resize the control as needed with the window. We have data detectors. That's the same as Apple uses in their own applications for Apple Mails, and it can identify information in a text, like phone numbers, URLs and emails, as well as flight numbers and addresses. You get the position where the data is, and it is split into different values, so you can see what's the zip code, what's the city name, or what's the phone number. This can be very useful if you get in some text, you have to pass information and leverage the existing frameworks here. In the MBS Soldier plugins, we have a plugin for SQL database access, and there we recently added new database clients for KubeSQL and DuckDB, but also we have all the existing connectors, so you can connect to whatever server you like. And if your customer asks you for Microsoft SQL Server or SQL Anywhere or Postgres, we have that all in our plugin. We added edit and update for the SQL database classes, so you can actually work with records and edit values in place, and then the plugin can create the update statement for you. We added support for the row set classes to use the API 2 in Sojo. And for the SQLite implementation, we added extensions for math functions, for geopoly functions, and for the Unicode extensions. So you can benefit from those extensions. In general, we recommend to try our SQL plugin because it's an alternative to what's built into Sojo. It offers a few more options. It can stream blob values. It can connect to SQL Server for Mac and Linux. It offers you multi-threading support, so your application is not blocked while you do edits on the database. And we can do bulk transfers and, for example, have the records that download records in um, packs of 100, so you get a much higher throughput when you query your database. Then we got support for RabbitMQ, a messaging queue in an open source library, and you can use it in your Soldier apps to connect to your company message queue. It's cross-platform for Mac and Windows and Linux, so you can connect, you can list the queues, you can listen on the queues for new messages coming in, but also you can send messages and talk to other applications using the same message queue. For the people who like to do math in Sojo and are not happy with the double or 
64-bit integers, we got bigger classes like big number. Big number is a 320-bit floating point number with around 70 digits. And if that's not enough for your math, we added bigger number. And bigger number is the same class, but with many more bits. So it's over 2000 bits floating point number. So you have a position of 600 digits. And if you like to make integer math and you need really big numbers, we got the large number MBS class, which allows you to do math on over 4000 bit integer numbers, which can be handy for some encryption algorithms. And you have a precision of over 1200 digits. So whatever you calculate, you can use those classes. And if you don't have that many digits currently in use, the large number class is very clever as it only allocates how many bits you need. So it's very dynamically. Then we added uh, things for Windows specific. For example, we now use for some plugins the Visual Studio 2019 runtimes, which are pre-installed with Windows 11, so no problem there. Soldier also pre-installs them now. And in general, our plugins only need the 2015 version of the runtime, which is included with Windows 10. But now we are moving more and more to using newer classes in Visual Studio. So more and more plugins will need newer runtimes soon. But in general, it should not be a big problem because also Soldier itself is moving to use more of Visual Studio in 2019. So as, as we progress, the Soldier IDE will need it more. The bundled runtime libraries you ship with your application will install the newer libraries, so it should not be a problem. And we can benefit from newer classes in C++. One of the things we did uh, in the last year was thread pooling, which means that instead of creating a new thread for every uh, threaded SQL query or for every threaded uh, picture calculation, we pull those threads so we can reuse them when you do the same operation again later. And all the threads are, are using no CPU time while they're waiting for new jobs. It's a great way to reduce the overhead of creating new threads every time you run a query. Then we got the Win Spell Checker class, which allows you to implement spell checking within your Soldier application. You can pass in some text, get the spelling errors, and suggest uh, replacements for the user. Then we got a Windows Report Error class to create errors for the Windows Error Log, so you can um, report errors for the admins on a server application and they find it in the event log as with every other service running in the background. We improved our direct show classes for recording audio and video on Windows with a new pin class and related methods. So you can identify individual um, things on a camera, like a microphone may have a pin for left or right audio and so you can individually control them. For the last year or two, Microsoft shipped WebView 2, their own implementation of um, a browser engine based on Chromium. And you can use that in Sojo with our plugin. It's a control for Sojo, and you can just use it and you not rely on uh, shipping 100 megabytes of libraries with Com Chromium yourself, but you leverage what's installed on Windows. It's pre-installed for Windows 11, but for Windows 10, you may include a light installer in your installer. So you can run this um, installer while your application installs and make sure that there is a version of WebView 2 included. But if if you do so, you can uh, get a modern browser without much work. It can run JavaScript as needed. And we have events in Sojo, so you can react on things happening, like the page is being finished loading or a new page is about to load. And we got a new event for a window request. So if you click a link which would open a pop-up window, you can decide in your code if you open a new Sojo window and then have the new page load. 
as you may know, we have classes to work with the local databases for contacts, reminders and events on macros and iOS. In the last year we added new properties there to get your birthday and the location for an event. You may even uh, link events, participants uh, with a contact, so you can load the uh, contact page for a participant of an event. Also, we can map a lo location with an event, so you can directly get the map view item, so you can show it on your Apple Maps control. And with C and Change History Event class, you can query the history of contact, so you can see what happened since the last time you synchronized your database with the contacts database and learn what contacts got created, deleted or changed and you can apply all those changes to your application. Then we have a class to work on Word files. It allows you to load a Word file, make changes and then save it as a new Word document. This allows you basically to find and replace text in a template. So you load a template, you change fields like first name, last name and customize your Word document and then you save it and process it by sending it to the customer. We also got a contains function which allows you to look for any text in a Word document and see if this text exists and also a substitute function allows you to change any text which is even more flexible than our text functions. Then we changed smaller things in the plugin like our string handle class is now a little bit more flexible by adding new uh, content. We got a read file and write file function to read a file into memory or write a file from memory to be much quicker than using binary streams. We also got a utility function like find byte which helps you to search certain byte offsets in a memory block. The classes for barcode detection with the vision framework on Megos got new barcode types, so you can use them to better detect barcodes. And for AV Foundation, we got metadata classes to get recognized barcodes, so you can show a camera view and have it automatically find barcodes while it's getting data from the camera and this way you get an event if a new barcode is detected and your application can react on it. And for our support of the tag lib library to read and write um, metadata in mp3 or mp4 files, we got a new function to read the cover art and get you a picture for this CD album. And for our classes for dynamically uh, declares, we got uh, the callback class improved, so it's now thread safe and works cross platform. And whenever the system calls the callback and we detect it's not on the main thread, we will schedule it to run on the main thread. So you can use all your Sojo classes for the user interface without getting any exceptions. The roadmap. It's always good to know what's coming soon, uh, especially we put in a lot of work for upcoming targets. As of today, all our plugins are already built for Linux 64-bit on ARM and we are waiting for Sojo to be ready for this. Also, we built our plugins for Windows 64-bit on the ARM target. We may build the classes for Android as soon as the plugin SDK gets updated to show us how we should build them. And of course we are looking forward to the WWDC from Apple to see what's new there. And otherwise we wait for your feedback to see what's missing on the plugin and what we could add for you. Of course we have a little special offer for this XTC. So you can use the coupon code XTC sale to get 20% of all new licenses, including Dyna PDF, SQL and Chart Director. And the offer is valid for April and May. 
So if you need a license or you have a friend who needs a license, they can just use this discount code and enjoy a little benefit. If you have questions, please email me at support at monkeypadsoftware.de and we hope to see you all later this year in Nashville, Tennessee for a live event. Thank you for watching.